this movie was just top top notch professional. The the script, the words they said, how fat, well the actors played it. Um, and the cinematography, following them along through halls. I wasn't familiar with Aaron Sorkin's work because I don't watch television. Mm -hmm. So this was the first time I saw it, and unbelievable to me. And you actually spoke with Aaron Sorkin leading into this film. Tell me about your role. Yes, yes. We had meetings on multiple occasions and just talked for hours and hours, anything I could think of saying. Little tiny, tiny bits that were somewhere else kind of got used by him and painted in a different way, a different place. And you spent hours with him on the phone, in person? In person. In person. Oh, yes. Oh, Did you yes. guys argue about anything? Did you disagree over any scenes? Um, no. We, as a matter of fact, we haven't even talked about the scenes. I never once looked at the script after he wrote it. I didn't feel it was appropriate for somebody that's in a movie to look at a script and say, no, it didn't happen this way, because it's his art. And his art isn't necessarily, you know, when you're close to something, you always see a movie, every movie I've seen about Apple, they've got all oh, the scenes, people's personalities are wrong, this is not what we said, this is not how it went down, these are not the things we would have done. And, and after, a while, after a while, you realize, well, it's the artistic freedom to make a movie that's enjoyable. Because some others have said, well, there's a lot of things in this movie that didn't actually happen. I mean, would you say that? Um, the, per, maybe everything in the movie didn't happen, but they're all based on things that did happen. Everything For example, in the movie didn't happen? Well, maybe, but you see, everything I say, every scene that I'm in, I wasn't talking to Steve Jobs at those events. I don't even say things like that, and I didn't say them, but they were based upon things. Uh, for example, there's parts of me saying, Steve, please, please acknowledge the Apple II team all the way for 15 years through the movie. Like, I would do that, and all it's based on is there was one shareholders meeting, didn't mention the Apple II, the people in the Apple II division were ready to quit, and I don't complain, but... On their behalf, I was their only voice. Right. So for them, I called John Scully, not Steve Jobs. I called John Scully to come. So things get rebuilt into a movie in certain ways. There's also myths about me, Steve Jobs, our relationship, what we each did. And those come out in the movie more along the lines of the myth and not reality. So what is the myth and what is the reality? Well, one of the myths is, okay, Steve, I just cared about the past and Steve Jobs was for the future. I was so gung-ho fighting every product he introduced. I was there. I loved him. I, I loved the products. I felt they were good because they came from Steve Jobs. Um, I was gung-ho for them. One of them is like the Macintosh. He portrays it like a bunch of people were for the Apple II and not the Macintosh when he introduced it. You know what? We sat down. He showed me the um, 1984 commercial privately, and he said that the board had voted it down. It wasn't going to show it at the Super Bowl. And I was shocked, and I said, uh, part of the reason was it cost $800,000 for the spot we had. And I said, Steve, I'll pay 400000 if you'll pay 400000 and we can, show this, we can show this ad because we should show it because this is us. I believed in the Macintosh so much. Even John Scully believed in the Macintosh. It's just that you have to manage a business, and it was going to take three years to build the market, and Steve didn't understand that. These kind of interactions come out in the movie. But the myths, the myths are sometimes different. Right. Steve Jobs was good, and they didn't listen to him, and... and Messed up Apple? No, no. That's not true. Not to, no, no. The movie kind of shows a true well, part of it, but it doesn't really. The movie is not about reality. The movie's about personalities. How would a discussion between Steve and John Scully have gone down? And they even show them meeting at a later date. Steve never talked to John Scully again in his life. So, if, as you say, everything in the movie didn't happen, maybe uh, does it matter? Does it matter that this then becomes the the, yeah. the popular understanding of what did happen? Well, listen to this. In the background of what was going on, it wasn't about what was going on because everyone knows the story of the evolution of personal computers, of the evolution of Apple, of the evolution of Apple products. Everyone knows that. This was in private meetings that are never on video, ever. Well, how would Steve interact with people on a daily basis? And it shows different sides of Steve in that regard. Right. So you're saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it didn't happen? It, it matters that it's a great movie. This movie is a product. If Steve Jobs were making movies as his product, this is the quality that he would have had. Absolutely. Right. So let's talk about the acting, which you said was amazing. Seth Rogen's portrayal of you. What did you think? I liked very much the character that he played, even the character doing things that I didn't do or in very different places or times or ways. Um, I liked the way he played. I, I looked at that character. I admire that character, even though it said words. I could never say negative words. You know, Steve, you didn't do anything. I could never say a thing like that. Uh, and I never would. I would say what he did was more important, um, the way he says it back to me. I would never say, Steve, you're, call him a, an a-hole, you know, an epithet. I would never do that in life. I, I just can't. I'm just too, you Did know, you ever talk to Seth? So, Oh, yes. Yes. So tell me yes. about that. 
uh, I, I, well, he's just one of the coolest actors in my mind. I'm glad they picked him to portray me. <laughs> he went on Jimmy Fallon and he said, I've never, uh, this is an unusual role. I've never, usually don't play people who are smarter than me. <laughs> he usually plays a role of somebody that's. <laughs> so, what about Michael Fassbender's portrayal of Jobs? What did you think? I saw it and this was like a real person. I saw the Steve Jobs that I love in a lot of scenes for the things he was saying. And I saw Steve Jobs as, you know, sometimes not caring what other people think. He's going to do things his way. He's the right one, reality distortion or not. Um, saw all of those. And they were actually very realistic to um, how Steve Jobs might have done it. But it wasn't how Steve Jobs acted every minute of every day. Like in the movie, it had to be condensed. They picked a lot of the most dramatic scenes you could make out of the reputation of Steve Jobs. So Tim Cook came out saying he felt this movie was opportunistic. Uh, Johnny Ive later said mm -hmm. he feels like Steve's image and likeness have been hijacked, that there are sons and daughters and widows who are really upset about this movie. What do you, what do you make of that? Well, that, those comments actually got to me really deeply. And I started thinking, yeah, to make it, it's opportunistic on someone's life, but every business, everything any business does is opportunistic. But this is kind of taking a person's reputation. The thing is, Steve Jobs has multiple sides to his personality that he's known for, known for a lot of greatness and thinking ahead and are great products. Really, look at, look at the iPod and the iPhone. That was sort of the start of it and how music is sold. But these movies all go back to a former part of time that isn't up to that point in time when those things happened. So it talks about a lot of, and there are just hundreds of cases that I, I know firsthand experiences, some of them even with me, where Steve did things, how could any human being do this? Mm -hmm. You sit there. So there, there are a lot of those in his past, and unfortunately, a legacy has to live with the truth or not. So Lorraine Powell Jobs, as we understand it, called a couple of actors to try to get them to not participate in the film. Um, did she ever call you and say, look, she don't probably, be part of this? Well, she probably got the script if she was able to call them. Mm -hmm. And I can absolutely, you know, I feel... I feel two sides of me. I feel very bad about, you know, this is going to give Steve Jobs some more emphasis on some one kind of like one bad thing he did in his right. life. So did you talk to Lorraine or did she try to reach out to you? No, I don't. I'm not really close to them. Okay. And but it, no, it, it, it sort of stunned me to read that. And I had to start rethinking a little, you know, a little bit. And it is opportunistic on a person's life. But look at this. I'm in the movie as a little bit of a bad person towards Steve calling him names, things I would never do, and I'm looking bad. So it makes mm -hmm. me look bad. Mm -hmm. But no, 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 it's so well pl played and acted. The artistic element. By the way, did did um, for most of the products, there were three product introductions in this movie. And basically, some of these people, like Tim Cook, weren't around Steve Jobs during that time frame. How do you think of the job Tim Cook is doing today? I love it. I, I love the, the um, open, the, the greater consideration for charitable needs, worrying about the employees and treating them all equally and fairly. And um, the products that are coming out are not hedging back, hedging back and staying out of, you know, what they should all be. So, no, you, I, I love so in terms of the products, what do you think of the state of innovation at Apple? The state of innovation is is high, but people think of innovation as brand new categories of products, something like a car. Who knows if there's going to be an Apple car? But um, uh, things like phones, you kind of reach a point where things plateau and they get good. And sometimes the best thing is make sure every product works as well as the other one for anybody and doesn't confuse them and lose them. Something Steve Jobs was very good at. In other words, put in the balance of the best of the best of features. And you don't have to be the top camera in the world, the highest speed processor in the world, the longest battery life in the world. You just have to be good, very good in every category, a good balance. But you like your Apple Watch. Yeah, I like it for a lot of things. How, what do you think of the Apple Watch? Um, I think it's good. It's convenient. Uh, if I forget my watch, am I going to be stuck? No, because I always have to have the phone anyway. Right. And sometimes I pull out the phone, and sometimes I try things on the watch, and it sends me to the phone. But but for the most part, the things when the watch works, I'll ask a question. You know, um, you know, hey Siri, where am I? <laughs> what city am I in? And I'll get an I'll get answers. Or what's the tallest mountain in Argentina? And I'll get the answer. So, how optimistic are you about the prospect of an Apple car? I'm extremely optimistic because um, just the name Apple, I, I'm in that, that group too, although I don't treat it like it's a holy religion and there's one, <laughs> one icon. Um, no, but Apple has to do something. How's a company like Apple, the largest company in the world, to grow? It has to be something very huge financially. And cars are about to go through huge financial turnover. If we get to 
um, electric cars, self-driving cars, um, charging stations. You think Apple can do it as well as Tesla, for example? Fewer accidents, less less uh, less medical money. Right. Do you think Apple can do it as well as Tesla, for example? Um, you know, it's hard to say. Apple can do it, yeah, better, of course. I'm not going to say, no, I don't think Apple can. I'm <laughs> not going to say that. That'd be stupid. Any company out there, <coughs> General Motors, could possibly do it better than Tesla. But Tesla, I admire so much. It's like I almost think nobody can do it better. They could do it equal. Do you miss Steve? Do you still miss Steve? Um, I, I miss him. But again, you know, it was such a strong idolism and this and that. And I'm not a religious type person and a cult type person. You know, we have one cult leader. So I don't, so that part I don't miss. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are there any, who are the innovators out there that you think embody some of his qualities? Well, I, I actually admire Elon Musk because the nature of his car, his car, like Steve Jobs, built an iPhone and talked about how every little detail had to be right for him. And that iPhone came out not crowded, not cluttered. It was just a beautiful transformation. Elon built a car for himself, the, the Model S Tesla, and it has taken over the world. We've got the first car, successful car startup company in America since 1927. Have you ever been asked to take a role on Apple's board or a ceremonial position with Apple? Would you like no. to be more involved in the day-to-day -day there? I've, I've never been asked. Steve Jobs was asking me questions along those lines near the time he was dying. Would you, did you want to come back to Apple? And, and I told him, no, no, no. I love the life I have. I have a really nice life. I get to go around, talk to high schoolers and university students and, and governments and, you know, inspire them to uh, want to have creation of technology and make that a part of their business. What did he want you to do? At Apple. What? Oh, he didn't say anything. He, he was just sort of asking like he had read something. Did you really want to come back? Who knows? Maybe some little role. But you know what? I told him, I told him frankly, I'm sorry. Running big companies, the organization, the, the personal ethics versus the business ethics, I couldn't really do it. I'm not the right person for that.